It is Asia's great escape. North Koreans fleeing to freedom over embassy walls. For months now, desperate adults and children have been risking all to seek asylum. It was once an impossible dream, the fortified border with South Korea trapping them like a prison wall. But after years of enduring famine and repression, North Koreans are feeling real hope of getting out. Their goal to reach sanctuary in the South Korean capital, Seoul. And the reason is a highly effective people smuggling network that's been set up in Seoul. It's illegal, but it's not run by criminals, it's run mainly by churches. And its aim is not just to help North Korean refugees, it's to start a process they believe will bring down the North Korean regime. Douglas Shin is God's smuggler. A Korean-American pastor, he's helped create what was once unthinkable, an escape route to the South. He believes he has a divine mission to rescue North Koreans. I have to save and help these people who are being uh, drowned in the sea of cult and in the sea of dictatorship, in the sea of atrocities. The escape route is through China. Over the past year, Xin and his associates have brought out almost a thousand people. Hundreds have been smuggled to Western embassies in China, dodging police and paramilitaries in desperate sprints to freedom. Many more have escaped overland to Mongolia or Russia, where they've been granted refugee status and flown to Seoul. Shin's aim is to recreate what happened in East Germany 13 years ago, when a refugee exodus prompted the collapse of the communist regime. It will happen, and we want that to happen. And the alternative is an all-out war or prolonging of this humanitarian disaster in the north. So the sooner the better. And Lee Sunok can imagine seeing it. She recently escaped to South Korea and can scarcely believe the land of plenty she's come to. She has no doubt how many would follow if they could. 만에 이 지금 지금은 아이 많이 이제 에, 하, 북한도 이 한국에서 타는 걸 아는 사람은 오래면 아마 다올것 같아. 우리 생각에는 백성들은 백성들은 다 와요. This is where the long road to freedom begins. North Korea's 1400 kilometer border with its communist ally China. Unlike the border with South Korea, there are no minefields or barbed wire fences here, just guards to check nobody sneaks across the frozen river that separates the nations. Tens of thousands of North Koreans have bribed their way across to flee the famine. But all have exchanged one prison for another. China fears a flood of North Koreans, so it's refused to class them as refugees or let them travel further. Instead, it's tried to hunt them down and send them back to North Korea. So they are sent to political prisoner camp forever if they're a uh, repeated offender, or they are tried and sent to the regular penitentiary, or in case of first-time offender, first offender and uh, little children or women, maybe the penalty is a little bit lighter. But Across the board, uh, it's about seven years. Nobody's sure how many North Koreans are hiding here, but all are classed as illegal economic migrants. Chinese authorities have erected signs threatening to punish anyone who helps them. These photographs obtained by Douglas Shin show the state to which they can be reduced. 
families hiding in rubbish dumps in the latter stages of malnutrition. Those healthy enough to work live at the mercy of unscrupulous police and businessmen. Park Young-hee fled to China four years ago. A landlord gave her a place to stay, then sold her for $250. She was not just forced to marry a stranger, she also bore his child. South Korean Christians have flocked to Douglas Shin's campaign to rescue refugees from such misery. Presbyterian pastor Chung Ki Won has personally brought out more than 150 people. He decided to lead escape attempts after he saw North Koreans' plight during a visit to northern China. In October 2001, Pastor Chun travelled to the Chinese city of Harbin to bring a dozen asylum seekers to safety. The plan to cross by rail to the frontier town of Manjoli, then by foot to Mongolia. Their escape bid was recorded on tape to prepare future asylum seekers for the perils ahead. The group included Lee Sun Ok and Park Young Hee. We've disguised the faces of some other refugees who fear their families could be punished if they're identified. For three days, the refugees were briefed in a safe house on what to do and say. Each person was given a fake ID card. They would have to pass as Chinese at every document check. And it wasn't long before the risk became reality. At the train station, the first checkpoint brought the first arrest. Then more document checks inside the train. Park Young-hee had more to lose than anyone. She was travelling with her daughter. By morning, they had reached the town of Manjoli near the Mongolian border. Once again in a safe house, they gathered supplies and readied for the final dash to Mongolia. 
Mrs. Lee made what she feared would be her last phone call to her sons, also hiding in northern China. They drove as close as possible to the border, ever fearful of Chinese patrols. The weather had turned cold, the snow had come early. The crossing would be even more dangerous. After saying goodbye to their helpers, they faced a 12-hour walk through the night. Battling exhaustion, Park Young-hee carried her daughter the entire way. Once in Mongolia, they were granted refugee status and flown to South Korea. But the man who brought them out, Pastor Chung Ki Won, was later caught by Chinese police and jailed for seven months. There is one other way out for North Koreans that's far less gruelling than the overland escapes, but perhaps even more dangerous. It's here in Beijing's diplomatic district, where freedom can come just by jumping over an embassy wall. This escape route is far more than a way to freedom. It's become a battleground between activists and the Chinese government over the treatment of North Korean refugees. Since May last year, Korean church groups and their allies have organised mass asylum bids at Western embassies and consulates. They've risked arrest every time. Not only does China refuse to recognise North Koreans as refugees, Chinese police are under orders to stop them defecting. In this asylum bid at the South Korean embassy, police pushed and punched six diplomats and tried to drag the North Koreans back outside. The people smugglers have tipped off Western media before every asylum bid, despite the risk of alerting police. Part of the aim has been to cause maximum embarrassment to the Chinese authorities. And most of the time I like to create trouble, to, 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 to create a confusion. Because Norbert Follettson has been a key instigator of the embassy escapes. He's an associate of Douglas Shin, but unlike the church groups, he's not motivated by religion. I'm a German. I'm a German who, who realised that his grandfather's generation, his parents' gen generation was accused that they kept silent when they got some knowledge about rumours about concentration camps. And I think I have to learn out of history. Norbert Follettson spent 18 months in North Korea as an emergency doctor with the German aid group Kapan Amur. The North Korean government awarded him its highest honour, the Friendship Medal, after he grafted his own skin onto a burn victim. That allowed him to travel freely around the country to see children starving and adults tortured. What he found reminded him of Nazi death camps. I'm not a politician, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a diplomat. I'm a simple emergency doctor and I got the knowledge there are some rumours about concentration camps in North Korea and there are 
children who are starving. So I have to speak out and as a German I have to learn out of history not to keep silent when there is some crime against humanity. Now based in Seoul, Dr. Follettson has become a full-time activist against North Korea and its ally China. His determination to expose China's treatment of asylum seekers is matched only by China's determination to conceal it. When North Koreans rushed the Ecuador embassy inside a foreigner's compound in Beijing, police surrounded the only news crew they thought was filming. They attacked the cameraman and seized the tape, unaware another camera was recording the whole melee from the building opposite. We thought, together with the media, we can make this point when in front of television cameras there are some North Korean refugees who are detained, who are arrested, who are kicked, punished in front of the television cameras, in front of the international community, then we can raise the issue of North Korean refugees. Police caught some of the asylum seekers and dragged them out to be deported. But under the glare of the media spotlight, China has so far allowed all North Koreans who gain sanctuary in embassies to leave for Seoul. Even when we are getting arrest, we do not care because the Chinese police proved and the Chinese authority proved that they will release our members and the North Korean refugees very soon when they are arrested in front of television cameras. The authorities have now surrounded the embassies with barbed wire and paramilitaries to stop asylum seekers scaling the fences. China has an agreement with North Korea to deport would-be defectors. It's continued to steadfastly support its Stalinist neighbour, fearing the instability that could follow the regime's collapse. Whenever you are dealing with a dictatorship, they will fight back. There will be a crackdown and the Chinese authorities are not amused about our uh, activities. So first there will be a crackdown. But, but in the long run, I'm very much convinced that we will succeed. The refugees themselves have no interest in geopolitics. They're just trying to find a better life. Mrs Lee has used a grant from the South Korean government to set up a restaurant. She will never go hungry again. Two of her sons have also made the journey from China. But she worries about the fate of her third son, still trapped in North Korea. Park Young-hee has had a harder time. Her relatives in North Korea were jailed in apparent retaliation for her escape. The refugees who've escaped are a tiny fraction of the population, but perhaps the start of something much bigger. Every one of them has left loved ones behind, and none will have true peace until their families and friends can join them too. Yeah.